I'm going to step back so that I get a full view, which is going to be necessary for doing the moves when we start moving. So everything, this is, this is what we've got. Yep. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to this. Um, I'm going to try not to be a talking head very much, but there are a few things that need to be said. One is, uh, I'm so grateful to the JCC for doing this um, because it's a help, well, not just to me, obviously. I've been doing Tai Chi for 30 some years, but it's a help for everybody. It's a wonderful practice in a time of stress and in a time of changing all the major things that our lives are changing, all the things that we're changing in our lives. And I stress that uh, unstressing is the nature of Tai Chi. It is a practice. That is, we come to it when we can, with regularity if we can, to build what is the essence of Tai Chi, and that is centering and calmness and a unified view of the life you're in. Uh, tai Chi is a, a physical practice, uh, but it is also a mental and, if you can get there, a spiritual practice. And it does what it does little by little. So I always emphasize to people that Tai Chi is not work, it is called playing Tai Chi. And that is you bring to it a spirit of play in that you are open, you are relaxed, and you are willing to try some things out that maybe you have thought of, maybe you have not thought of. Tai Chi is an old discipline that was begun as a martial art. When you see all the postures such as Yang style, one that has the name of white crane or you know, a large bird spreading its wings, it is a, a defensive move, it's a martial art, but it also is an integrative move. It brings the body into the center and out from the center in a unified way. This is beginning Tai Chi. What we hope for today is to get an idea of the practice and of the essence without, as I said, my talking too much about it. One of the main practitioners that I refer to a lot is Dr. Paul Lamb, who is a general physician in Australia, Chinese born. He started studying Tai Chi the way the Chinese classically do when he was a very young man. He is an internationally recognized champion. And I'm just going to bring his name up so that Dr. Paul Lamb, L-A-M, if you want to look on YouTube, you can find him practicing forms. You can find him giving examples of his teaching, and it's a good resource. He says things that make a lot of sense to me, such as Tai Chi was developed in a time when people were fighting for our lives, and now we use Tai Chi to fight for the quality of our lives. I think fighting is the wrong word, but contend, maybe. All right. So Tai Chi starts from the core, and the core is identified as the Dantian, variously translated as the place of healing, the place of elixir, or the place of change. The Dantian is an energy complex. There are three main ones in the body, one around the heart, one around the brain, and one just below the navel. Uh, they say three finger widths below the navel and two finger widths in. It's a place. Just as chi is an energy, you're not going to be able to find a beaker full of chi. You can't buy it on Amazon. But if you didn't have chi, you would not be hearing what we're saying. Chi is energy. It's life energy. It's what the yogi identifies as prana, for one thing. All right, so the dantians, the middle, the lower, and the upper, we mostly work with the lower. This is the power plant. All the movements of Tai Chi are rooted in the feet, the classics say, distributed by the waist, 
brought up the legs to the waist, the waist being the Dan Tian. So when I'm going to do that white crane or stork cools his wings and I step back, one arm goes up and one arm goes down and forward, I'm moving from the center. It's not my arms moving by themselves and the rest of the body disjointed. The Tai Chi principle is to move from the center, to be integrated, to use the energy outward, upward, downward, backward, forward, in all directions at the same time. That does not mean that you have to think of that when you're practicing your Tai Chi. We're gonna do some basics for practicing. Uh, tai Chi started as 13 original postures, static postures, such as stork cools his wings, or say brush knee, in which the forward hand brushes by the forward knee and the other hand is a strike. Now you can see in this posture, my body is upright, the spine is upright. I'm not leaning forward, I'm not leaning backward, but I'm upright. So the spine has revolved as I turn the body forward in a slight curve. Same thing with the stork cools his wings. My arms are curvilinear. They're not locked and straight. They, if I brought them back to match, they would complete a circle. If I turn the palms to face myself, I have two uh, matching parts of a circle. The energy idea is that the whole body is in a circle or an egg and that it extends to the back, even though your arms are not doing that. So we work with circular moves from the center out. And I'm going to show you the opening of the Yang style 24 form. The 24 is the most popular form of Tai Chi in the world, practiced by the most people. I'm going to show you a few moves just so you have something to watch besides all this talk. We always start with the feet together, balanced and centered. Now I'm going to move out to the left. I'm going to do that not by falling left and catching myself, but by centering, moving to the right leg, dropping the energy and extending the left foot, and then bringing myself to the center. Having gotten my lateral direction, I get my up and down by raising hands. And then I lower hands and sink. The tailbone leads and I come into a slight crouch. Now I'm gonna keep moving left, shifting the weight. The right hand floats up and then I turn and close like this. When I close, I'm holding a big circle, a big ball, like a beach ball, but it's energy, it's chi and it can go in a direction like this or like that. In this form, I have raised the left hand and sunk the right one. It's called parting the wild horse's mane. There are flowery names as mnemonics to remember the moves because there are always more moves and they are too abstract unless you have something to hang them on. So I step out. I raise hands, lower hands and sink. Then I shift left and the right hand comes up and I turn, pivoting on the right heel. You can't see it right here, but I will step back and show it to you. Now from the right foot, all my weight is on that foot and I step out with the left. And then as I come forward, I turn some more. At full stretch, my body is arranged so that the front knee is more or less a right angle. If it is too much of an angle forward, I'm going to stress and strain my knee. So I sink my heels, the back one and the front one. And the idea is that the energy, the chi, goes into the earth, not just attached to the surface of the earth, but using earth chi to help me get balance and connection. Balance and connection, you could say, are two of the essential principles of Tai Chi. Now, if you want to try this, 
you start with the feet maybe an inch or two apart and you are balanced so that you are slightly loose what the chinese call sun means relaxed it does not mean collapsed collapse is when you are tofu and you move like tofu and there is no strength we want to have strength we want chi we want to use it so I shift my weight to the right leg. That is, I bring the weight of the body over to the right leg. I lift the left heel and I put my left foot over just as much, just enough that it does not change the body weight. In other words, I do not want to be dumping the weight. I'm just going to extend the left foot. I touch the toe down, then I sink to the heel, and then I bring myself to the center, pulling with the left leg, pushing with the right at the same time. Now, I've got about a shoulder's width between my feet. That's the ideal width of stance for most of the Tai Chi forms, especially the Yang style. Now, from here, I'm going to raise hands. And this is not my hands coming up by themselves. You can see the difference between that and this. The hands float up. The shoulders are not rising. If the shoulders were rising, they would come up like that. And you would have your chi stuck up here. But what you want to do is allow the backs of the wrists to leave. At the same time, let the energy sink through the heel. Yeah, let's try that. And then let the hands float down as if they were on warm water that's draining slowly out. And the hands come down to right about navel level. Imagine resting on the head of a small child if you want to. But you don't, you know, I don't know whose child you're going to use, but be nice. So lower hands. Let's try it again. The feet are together. A couple of inches apart, maybe an inch or so. The weight goes to the right leg. The left leg floats out, you touch the toe, you sink the heel, you shift to the center. Inhaling, you breathe the backs of the wrists up to shoulders height. And exhaling, you lead with the tailbone and you sink just a couple of inches and the hands glide down to about hips or navel level, right here around the Dantian. That's the setup and from there we start Moving to the left in the Yang 24. And I'll let you watch me do a few of those so that you can relax a little bit. Although I know you're already relaxed by now. We step out, raise hands, lower hands and sink. And then raise the right arm as I shift left, taking the weight into the left leg. And then I pivot on that right heel. The right toe comes to close to the corner. I shift back, I step out with the left foot, I part the wild horse's mane. I'm parting the blueberries as well, so I'm just gonna shift a little bit. Here's the stance, wild horse's mane. There are two more of these. So I'm gonna shift back and turn out that way. And the arms revolve as the spine turns. And they're just rotating, same place. And then I shift to the left foot and extend the right. And I bring the body forward as I curve in and forward. And then I do it one more time. Am I still in the camera? Yes, I am. And I'm gonna adjust my feet a little bit. Left foot forward, here's the third wild horse's mane. And then here is Stork Cools' His Wings that I started off with. Now here I'm balanced on the left foot. Can you see the left foot? Just on the toe or the ball of the left foot. The right foot is flat and the right foot is pointing out at an angle. If I made a 90 degree angle with my feet, not only would I look like Charlie Chaplin, but I would have the two angles that the Yang form uses in reference to the form. When I'm facing forward this way, 
the back foot is at that 45 degree angle. The front foot is forward. And again, there's a right angle from the left knee down. You should be able to look down and see your toe in the front of your foot. If not, you have gone too far forward and you will stress your knee. We want not to stress your knee or anything else. Maybe we want to stress a few points, but that's about intellectual points. Tai Chi uh, backs up and encompasses the idea of having everything balanced, equal, and wholesomely gathered together. So you're not one shoulder up and one shoulder down. You're not, you're forward with the pelvis or backward with the tailbone. It is a form that we practice to make the body aligned and balanced and comfortable. While it strengthens all the important muscles and tendons, it exercises the joints. All of these reasons are why Tai Chi has proven to be very good for balance and for fall prevention. I'm gonna also show you a few steps of Dr. Paul Lamb's arthritis and fall prevention form. And you'll see the difference, hopefully, between the Yang style and his modified Sung style, S-U-N, Sung. All right, one more time. We start with the feet together. We're centered and balanced. The shoulders are relaxed. The feet are glued to the earth in the sense that you're not rolled onto the edge, outer or inner. Your feet are adhering to the earth. They're connected. Now we shift the weight to the right leg. The left foot becomes empty. You raise the left heel, you extend the left foot out, you touch the toe, you drop the heel, you shift to the center, and then inhaling, you breathe the backs of the wrists up, floating up on warm air to shoulders height, and then exhaling, elbows down, you sink, and the hands flow down to Dantian level. You shift left, and the right foot empties, and the right hand comes up, and you turn the spine. You're facing the corner, and you shift back to the right foot, and you swing the left foot around, you place the heel, and then the toe, and when the foot is flat, you come forward, turning to the front to part the wild horse's legs. All right, there's a lot going on in all of those movements. It's a simple movement, a simple collection of movements, but there's a lot going on. You don't have to remember everything all the time. One of the things that I was taught and that I like to remind students is practicing Tai Chi, you think of yourself as a cube. You've got sides, top and bottom, and front and back. And what we want to do is round the cube into a globe. To do that, we're going to polish the corners, but we're gonna polish them very slowly and gently and without any concentrated overbearing effort. So we're going to go globular on our own time and have fun with it. All right? You can't object, you're muted. It's got to be all right. Uh, after part the wild horse's mane, there are three of those. I showed you that. Then there is stork cools his wings, this gathering punctuation point in which I'm balanced on the back foot. The, the, the uh, ball of the left foot is in contact with the earth. In terms of martial arts, that is sh shorthand for a kick. That means you're going to probably be kicking to ward off an incoming attack by somebody, or at least you're ready to. It would be a little knee stopper. Somebody's kicking at you, you're gonna stop them at the knee. In terms of balance, here you are. Now you turn the spine from facing this way, you go to that corner. Remember that other 45 degree angle? So the spine turns and the right forearm rotates. My view stays right where it is. I'm looking straight ahead at my opponent. It means that I don't look around and lose my focus. 
if I'm talking to you and I look over there and start talking, the energy goes over there. You want to keep your energy focused. And that's what you do by maintaining this view as you turn the spine. And then you're going to sink again because Remember when we raised and lowered hands, we come down to the working crouch. You're slightly lowered down. It's not as much as Groucho. He's way down there. And you want to gradually build up your strength. So you only go as far as you're comfortable with. From the stork cools his wings, we make this turn and then we sink back to that crouch. As I sink, the right hand goes down and the left hand comes up and they come together. And then I turn back to this corner with the spine. So the spine has been facing forward, then it rotates to that corner, then it rotates to that corner, and then it comes back to the front. All the while, my attention is here. So from here to Stork Cools His Wings, to the wind up, sink, stretch the left foot and brush knee. The forward hand brushes past the forward knee. In this pose, again, the forward knee, there is a more or less a right angle from the knee down to the foot. This time, the right hand comes across the body, or at least out front. Whereas before, in part the wild horse's mane, the right hand sinks and the left hand comes across. In this move, brush knee, the left hand sinks and the right hand comes across. So it's a little bit, a little different use of the same muscles. Okay, let's stop here for a second. I'm giving you a lot of information. There will be time at the end of the class, at the end of the workshop, for you to ask questions. So it's important not to crowd the plate too much. I mean, we only have chopsticks that are this long. We had the big ones, the cooking chopsticks, we could have more on our plates, right? You can't even answer my bad jokes. All right, this is the Yang Style 24. Yang Style 24 was created in the 1950s when Tai Chi was rehabilitated after the Cultural Revolution. During the Cultural Revolution, it was thought by some of the powers that be that training a bunch of martial artists was maybe not such a great idea in terms of the possibility of further revolution against the people who are trying to keep order. Once they realized that it's good for people, again, it was rehabilitated, they formed the 24, out of the standard long form, the Yang style long form called the 108 moves. 24 is a compact, one size fits all, all purpose form. And it is like all things in Tai Chi, infinite. You cannot run out of learning about the 24. That should make you happy <laughs> if you are interested. All right, the Yang Style 24, you have seen that it has large expanded moves. It turns curvilinear circles going up and down and sideways and the energy, the big ball rolling forward and then a rest and then another move. The 24 is arranged in clusters. So you do one side, the other side, then you do one side. As we did with part the wild horse's mane, there's one left, there's one right, and then there's a third, a left one. And then we have the punctuation, stork cools his wings. Then we do brush knee in threes, brush knee left, brush knee right. And after the third brush knee, the punctuation move is this one. Play the fiddle, it's supposed to look like you're playing the Chinese pipa. You know, that would be an awkward way to do it, but these are mnemonics to remember things. Now this time, you can't see it yet, but instead of being balanced on the left ball of the foot, I'm balanced on the heel of the foot. That indicates not a kick, since it's hard to kick from the heel of the foot, but that indicates we're gonna be going back in the other direction. 
which is a good thing when you are trying to move masses of people, and Tai Chi brings masses of people to practice out in the mornings all over the world. We have moved forward three and forward three, and now we're going to bring back to more or less where we started the form. From this play the fiddle, the backward move turns this way. So this arm rotates that way, and the, uh, what do you call this thing, the spine turns that way, and this hand comes back, and balancing, the left foot comes up, and then you shift back and you turn again. It's called repulse monkey, as if a monkey were coming after you and you are repulsing it that way. And instead of three, this one comes in an issue of four. So it's more symmetrical and you start off, you end up where you start off in this position. After the third repulse monkey, a fourth one, okay, you end up here and then you turn and close. That's the way the form is arranged. Um, now I told you I'm gonna show you some other, I can take this off now, can't I? Here, my assistant. <laughs> that's, that's the poodle, we'll get that. Okay. Um, after the Yang style 24, my assistant is going to come into view here. Oh. The Yang style 24 is formed in those little clusters. Now I'm going to show you a taste of the Sung style form developed by Dr. Lam. And it is similar but different. It starts with the feet together, but the feet in that right angle, if you can see them, 45 degrees on each toe. And instead of raise and lower hands in the way of the Yang style, when you raise hands, they are on edge like this. And then you step forward and inhaling, you open up the Dan Qian, you expand the Qi and then you compress the Qi. Now this called cultivating the Qi, this movement of opening up and closing the hands. And actually when you practice it for a while, it's part of a lot of Qigong moves, you can feel the resistance between the two palm gates, you can feel the chi. Anyway, we built in this open and close, and then we turn to the side. And shifting my weight to the root foot, I advance the outer foot. I'm coming forward. This is called single whip. And it continues by retreating to the root foot and then moving left in three units of this persuasion. Slow and easy. Legs slightly bent. You're a little bit of a working crotch. And then you step and you cultivate the chi again. Now, because Tai Chi is very symmetrical, then I do that single whip and wave hands like clouds in the other direction. Out and back in and open, step. And on the third one, again, you cultivate the Chi with this opening and closing. Now you can see that there are similarities between the Yang and the Sung style. They are just styles. All Tai Chi is based on energy. The phrase Tai Chi is an old Taoist term meaning the supreme excellent or the best there is. And when it is applied to the martial arts form, the full name is Tai Chi Chuan, meaning the supreme ultimate fist or martial art, Chuan being fist or martial art. 
chi, the energy word, is a different word from the chi of Tai Chi. Um, probably you know that already, most of you. Since we can't do the characters, and I'm glad for that because I would be left out of it, you have to take the sound and the meaning of each word separately. So when we say Tai Chi, we're talking about this martial art form. When we say Tai Chi Chuan, it's specific to the form. All right. Now, the Yang style opened and went to the left. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. And then four back to the center. After that part, there is a symmetrical two-part, one in each direction, a set of four moves, one to the left, and then you turn around and you do that same four moves to the right in the 24 form, which is also based, as I said, on the long form, 108. In the Yang style, the move that I just did in Sung style, the wave hands like clouds, comes out of a different single whip. The Sung style single whip, as I just showed you, looks like this, and it flows into wave hands. In Yang style, the single whip comes around, you pick up a thing that looks sort of like a whip, and then you step around, here. That's Yang style single whip. Full body again, right angle, upright spine. Then this one turns and goes into the wave hands like clouds in this manner. And the stepping is a little different as well. Now you see that my root leg is firm and then I transfer to the other leg and then there is one more series of three and another single whip so the back hand the whip hand goes out when you're in one of these poses such as single whip in the yang style one foot always has more weight than the other. It's called the full leg, and the other is the empty leg. The full leg is the yang leg, and the yin leg is the other one. You know the yin-yang symbol, that ball, which is often described as two fish together. The white fish has a black eye, the black fish has a white eye. It is derived from Taoist philosophy, the conformity of all things, the wholeness of all things. You only have qi when you have complementary opposites working together. You cannot do anything simply yang or simply yin. It doesn't work that way. It's a matter of recognizing the energy of existence. Let all that go, but the yin and the yang are operative in Tai Chi with every move. The backward yin style, uh, yin weight goes to the forward yang weight. When this becomes yang, this becomes yin and vice versa. They trade all the time. It's something to think about in terms of the principle of moving. The only times when your weight is balanced on both feet are when you are opening the form and closing the form. Otherwise, you always have a preponderance of energy in one leg. When you are moving the body, they say, moves together. One thing moves, all things move. So my arm is never operating independently of the rest of the body. This Dantian is operating, and when it is, this one is operating, and this one. We're working for that symmetry in which everything about the body joins everything else. Now, some things lead, obviously, and some things follow, but they follow in a connected way. And this is part of the work of 
learning Tai Chi is that, you know, maybe I'm not doing this in a perfect way, but I'm thinking about how it should be. The only perfect Tai Chi is the one in your head. That's where ideal Tai Chi takes place. In the body, it's always gonna be a work in progress. As I often say, we are serial beginners. The title of this workshop came out as Tai Chi Beginnings, and I think that's apropos because Tai Chi is always about beginning. No matter how much you learn, you come back to the present, the principles, the essence. You come back to that ideal of letting the body find how to use the energy in a harmonious way. You gradually strengthen your muscles. You gradually strengthen your tendons. You gradually make your joints more supple. You learn balance by being relaxed and mindful and having fun at it. That doesn't seem like too much to ask, I hope. Anyway, it does work for thousands of people. What have we got? 1206, okay. Now, for the 24, we have these series of clusters as I have shown you. The opening move, raise and lower hands, and then the cluster of part the wild horse's mane, which is three of these. In between that, there is the punctuation move, stork cools his wings, and then there's a cluster of brush knee, and that's three of these going forward. And the punctuation move is play the fiddle. Then there's the four backward repulse monkey in which you open, turn, shift, and close, and then the other side does the same thing. And you get four of those and you come back to a place here. And then remember I told you we do two four part moves, one in this direction and one in that direction. That four series of four is called grasp the sparrow's tail because it has some resemblance. If you had a sparrow that was this big, you would want to be very nice to it and you stroke its back like that very gently. So coming out of Repulse Monkey here, we do a close holding that big beach ball. And then we do the four part grasp the sparrow's tail. The left foot comes forward and you bring the body forward. This is ward off. This is, if I were doing that circle, the other hand would complete the circle that way. But it's pressing down and this looks like the sparrow's tail. Now I'm going to turn, remember rotating the spine to that corner. So from there, I rotate the spine and the forearm at the same time, moving together. At the same time, I want my knees to not collapse in this position. The easy thing turning that way would be for that knee to collapse like that. But you want to turn on this, on the hips, on the Dantian, and feel the tension going down the legs. Tension not in the sense of I'm tense, but in the sense of muscular connection, your chi flowing down. You feel the muscles turning and connecting in the legs as you turn here. The next move is called roll back, in which you come back from the front foot, 70%, to the back foot and you turn your waist at the same time or the spine. So the spine starts out in this direction, it goes to that direction, and then it goes to that direction all the while moving from a forward stance, turn to the backward stance, turn and connect and press. Sweep the hands, shift back, a slight sinking and then push. So those four parts I mentioned, ward off, roll back, press and push. You're not stepping in this series. It's like you're stepping inside if you want to think of it that way. 
from Wardoff, you come forward, you turn to the side, you roll back, you turn to the front, you press forward, you clear the hands and shift back, and you roll the ball down and forward. Nice little move. You get to collect some energy and stretch yourself and strengthen the muscles. Then we turn around and we do it in the opposite direction. So from the push, which is the final one, you've got 70% of the weight on the front leg. You're gonna come back. Uh, from the front of the foot, if you can see that, as you come back, the toe comes up. So remember I said, this is not a kicking position. This is a kicking position. Here is a pivot. You're going to turn like this. This hip closes in like that. So from forward push, back. And you turn and the left foot swivels around and now you're knock kneed. You see how knock kneed I am? It's terrible. Just like that, from here to here. You want to make sure all your weight is on the back leg when you're doing one of these turns. Otherwise, you're going to torque your knee, your knee will complain, and it will hurt. And then we don't want that. We want your knees to be happy. We want your knees to be strengthened. So the weight comes to the back leg, you pivot around. Now this is going to become the back leg because I'm going to shift onto it. Here's my clothes. Remember the clothes over here? We do one here. I swing the right foot around and then I do my ward off. That's number one. I turn, keeping the knees up from collapsing. I roll back. I turn and the connect here. I press, I sweep out, shift back, and now a push. So there's that one, two, three, four in this direction. We're going to recap. There's a tiger swallow tail. Hello, baby. Dividend of practicing Tai Chi in your garden. We open the form with raise hands, lower hands, and sink. We turned and we did part the wild horse's mane three times. And then the punctuation, stork cools his wing. And then three times brush knee. One, two, three, left, right, left. And the punctuation, play the fiddle. Remember that? And then repulse monkey in which we move backwards four times. You'll have to take it on faith unless we can get the camera to somehow follow us. After the fourth one, there's the close. And then we do our grasp the bird tail, ward off, roll back, press, and push. And I'm speeding up here a little bit. And we turn around, we do that four part series in this direction and we end up with the push. All right, now we're gonna turn around again. Tai Chi is performed in a limited space. One of the teachers I admire very much is a Southern California teacher, a Sifu whose name is Hong Yang, who says that if you want to know how much space to allocate when you're going to do your Tai Chi practice, you need about enough space for a cow to lie down in. This does not mean you want the cow there. This is, uh, you know, you're envisioning this. But it's not a lot of space. We moved up three, pause, up three, pause, back four. We're back in more or less where we started. Then we turn and we do this side. And after this side, we're going to turn around the opposite direction again. Still doing the 24. So from the push, you're going to turn around. And here I'm moving from my Dan Tian, from this central gearbox, we call it energy gearbox. So I'm not moving my shoulders and my arms like that. They are following. And I, all the weight is on the back leg. And then remember single whip. Here's our single whip. 
And then here is that wave hands like clouds and you turn and you float and you turn and you step together and you go three of these and on the third one, which is gonna call this one the third one because I don't wanna run out of frame, you have single whip again. Now, I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but the contrast form I gave you with the Sung style was the single whip that looks like this and the wave hands that look like this. Just a little different, but I'm still doing the same energy transfer and I'm still doing the basic mechanical connection. Even though one form moves with the arms as if you're carrying a beach ball, and one form moves as if you're wiping your windshield, it's the same motion. I'm turning the waist, my arms are going up and down as I turn. One set does it this way, and one set does it this way. Basically, it's the same thing, just a different arrangement. You're engaged here, you're engaged there, you're upright, you're breathing, you're moving chi. Okay, back to the Yang 24. How's our time doing? We're doing well. We've got 45 minutes. Single whip. 70% on the front leg. That is a constant. Except on some of the moves we get to in which you've got 100% on the front leg. For things such as kicking, which would be difficult to do if you did not have 100% on the front leg or the back leg. And there's also a move called Golden Rooster Stands on One Leg. The description gives you a clue that you're going to have 100% on one leg. All right. So after single whip, we come through the wave hands like clouds. We're gonna set up for the first kick. And you do that by retreating and then you address the corner. Over here is where the kick, where my threat is. So I close and then this is called separation of feet or a heel kick. I'm presenting as little target as possible. So I'm not facing the corner full on. I've got my side profile. Then once I have stopped the incoming, I turn and I box his ears or her ears or their ears. It's hard to know which pronoun to use these days. So you kick, you extend, you retract, you turn the waist. You step out, I put the right foot flat when it is fully there, so I can depend on it, I bring my weight forward for double fist, strike with double fist. Then in the Yang style, there are two kicks. This one to this corner, the second one to the opposite corner. If this direction that we have been working the form in, if this is, well, hmm, it's this direction. We faced this direction for wild horse's mane, brush knee, repulsed monkey, and then we had the sideways wave hands like clouds. Now we're doing the corners. We started the corners, if you remember, we grasp the bird's tail. This corner, or that corner, and then turn around and do it in the other direction. So now, the kick. Heel kick and strike with double fist. Now I'm going to get around to address the other corner. Obviously, I'm going to do that by the same kind of maneuver here. So you do that gradually, slowly, and we hope in an integrated fashion. But as I said, the only perfect Tai Chi is the one that you have operating in your mind, the rest of it, we are building a model as we go. The energy comes forward, the energy comes back. 
the energy opens and closes, and then you deliver. When I kick to the back corner, I'm going to turn it around this direction. You can see that. Can you see? My root foot is down the kicking foot. I have a hinge here at the hip. I have a hinge here at the back of the knee. I'm going to activate those hinges independently of my balance. I'm not going to rear back to kick like that. I'm going to think of inhaling and drawing that up and then exhaling and the kick goes out. There are techniques for maintaining your balance, which it pays to use while you put your practice in place. And the kicking is one of those. You want to practice lifting and lowering the foot so that you don't throw your body out of vertical alignment so that you get these muscles working and you train that balance. You're just checking on us. That's the Tai Chi patrol up there. All right, we kicked heel kick in this direction, toe kick in this direction. It goes oriented still to the front, heel kick, turn to the corner, double fist, turn around, toe kick to the back corner. Now I want to reorient to our cardinal direction here, going this direction. So from my corner address, I'm going to turn and step out this way and now I'm reoriented and I'm going to do some more challenging balance moves. You know, you don't have to be trying these, although if you want to, that's good. You can find the form online. If you look for the Yang Style 24, you'll find various people doing it. If you have a mute button, you may want to employ it because most of the music that accompanies these forms, well, I will say this, you can get a free earwax cleaning if you keep the sound unmuted. That's just my impression. Anyway, now we have come from this corner. We have turned the spine. We come forward. We adjust this foot. We're going to do some symmetrical series. One on the left side, one on the right side, one on the left, one on the right. The first one is called Snake Creeps Down. The legend of Chan Sung Fung, who is reputed to have originated Tai Chi, although there are, is a number of people who have been <laughs> given that credit. The legend is that he observed animals sparring, a snake defending itself against a uh, white crane or a stork, some large bird. When the crane went after the bird, uh, uh, the snake, the snake retreated. When the crane backed up, the snake advanced. Tai Chi principles, the yin and the yang working together. So the snake creeps down in yang style, comes to the back foot, and there is a sinking onto the back leg. How young you are, how supple you are, are often factors in how you do this uh, part of the form here. You will see the old masters able to sink onto the back leg such that their glutes touch the ground and then they come forward and stand up. I can do that one in my head, but I can't do that one in my body and I don't want to. But what we do is we come back in and down, closing this hip a little bit and then forward. And this is a shoulder strike. Now, I only come forward enough that when I look down, I can see my toe. So again, you have the right angle 
from the knee to the toe at full stretch here. Then you rotate, you shift back, this toe goes out, and we do that golden rooster. You remember I talked about that? So we have the snake and the rooster. The snake goes down and forward, and then the rooster stands on one leg. Also called golden pheasant stands on one leg. Sometimes it's golden, some other big uh, fighting bird. I once had the good fortune to study with San Francisco master Shu Guoming, who always said of golden rooster stands on one leg. I love chicken. Chicken is martial art bird. You know why? Chicken never fall down. So you can take that as a role model if you like. But we want to not strain ourselves while we're doing our role model. So you're coming back and down and forward. And then you adjust and you stand left leg, golden rooster, golden pheasant. That's a pretty good accomplishment in itself. Then you do that on the other side, as I said, symmetry. I'm gonna review just a little bit. From the, the first kick up to this corner with the heel, you have the double fist. Then you turn around and you do the second kick in the opposite corner, like this. Then you turn, here's your single whip, hand, and you do the snake creeps down, shoulder strike, and the first golden rooster. Now you do it on the other side. So you step out. I don't know if I got away from you there. After the first golden rooster, you're going to step forward with that upper foot. You're going to open the back foot out. From here, forward, open out this foot. So now your hips are open and you come back and here's that slight drop, shoulder strike, adjust this foot and the second golden rooster. All right, we're doing pretty well here, we're covering the whole form. You know how long this usually takes? At least six weeks, at least. But we're, there, we're giving a whirlwind, perfect head style Tai Chi. We'll get to the rest of it later if you're still interested. The second rooster is on the right leg. Now what am I gonna do? My toe is pointed down, so that means I'm either gonna kick or I'm gonna step forward and in that case, that's what I do, and then I turn. And from my opponent here in front of me, it goes to the corner again. So that is this wind up here. Here's the close, holding the beach ball. Now I'm going to address that corner, and then I'm going to address that corner in the interests of our symmetrical pursuit. Close, step out, and this is called Fair lady works the shuttles. One hand goes up to block an incoming blow and the other hand goes out to strike. Supposedly looks like somebody working at a big loom, raising a whoop or a wharf, whatever they are, a woof and a warp, and pushing the shuttle across. I don't know which they are, but that's what it's supposed to remind people of. So you do it on one side from the golden rooster, fair lady on one side, and then you do it on the other side. So if I go here, then I'm going to shift and the arms revolve and I step out and do it on the other side. And now I turn, I step back, again, cat stance, you can't see that. Cat stamp, ball of the foot, and I turn, and this hand comes out over and down. It's called needle at the sea bottom. 
don't worry about the names, they're easily available. The idea is that I'm following a circle this way. And then I come back and I step out and I expand this way. And that's called fan through the back. So the forward foot goes out. And again, I come to my 90 degree angle. Now we're almost at the end of the form. I'm going to turn around again and go back that way. And the way I do that is by this stretch. And then a big shift and turn. And circle and the right foot comes across. I don't know if you can see that. Standing on the left foot, standing on the right foot. Standing on the left foot, the right foot circles across, the back fist here. Then the left foot comes forward and you block an incoming punch and you give one of your own, called parry punch. So this hand comes down, you take out a punch here, you get him in the floating rib, and then they grab your hand and you turn and scrape them off and push them away, turn to the front, cross hands, lower hands, rise and step together, and that's your 24 form. Pretty complicated, pretty simple. The simplicity of complication, I guess you could call that. Anyway, you see how the form goes. It is, as I said, the most practiced form in the world by Tai Chi practitioners. And it is built to be done in around an eight minute format. So the pace of your performance is aligned to your breathing, it should not increase your respiration rate. In fact, if anything, it should lower your breathing rate. You are able to incorporate this in a little piece of your day if you have it. And that word, a little piece of your day, can also subscribe to the P-E-A-C-E spelling of it, because if you can manage to put even little pieces of the form, even if you have five minutes and you do wave hands like clouds over in the corner or waiting to sequester from your good friend, you have to stay six feet apart. You can do this. It calms your rhythms. It centers you. It has all these benefits that are available. That's not to say that it works for everybody. Uh, tai Chi is not a virus, thank God, but not everybody catches it. Um, we have done the 24. I think you should also get to see the full little Sung style arthritis and balance form. So I'm going to do that for you. Remember we start this way. We inhale, we step up, and inhaling now, cultivate the chi, and you exhale, and then shift left, and I step out and I do Sung style single whip, and wave hands like clouds, over and together, and over and together. And I'm moderating my step so that you can still see me. And I end up with the third one here. And I cultivate the chi. And then I do it in the opposite direction. Symmetry. Single whip. And wave hands like clouds. Three times back in this direction. My knees are slightly flexed. My posture is upright. And on the third one, after every bracket of movements, you cultivate the chi. And now I'm going to do a brush knee. You remember we had brush knee in the Yang style. This one is a little different. And here's their play the fiddle. Same thing. And now this is, I'm going to back up a little bit. 
This is the Sung style parry punch. You reach out, roll the ball. Your feet are going at a 45 degree angle. Here's the parry and the punch. Remember clearing the hands in Yang style and then the push. There's the push. And we turn back and cultivate the chi. And then we're going to do the brush knee in the opposite direction. My weight is on the forward foot as I pivot on the back. Now my weight is on the back foot as I swing the forward one. Brush knee. Play the fiddle. Harry punch. First the left, then the right. Am I still with me? Sweep the hands, push, turn back, cultivate the chi. Now for the second part, I have another brush knee. I'm gonna back over here. And this time, instead of play the fiddle, I'm doing lazily tie the coat. And then there's a plain crossed hands. And we turn to the front. Now here is another version of single grip and this rotation and fist under elbow. Brush knee left. Brush knee right. Brush knee forward, lazily tying the coat. Plain crossed hands, smack them in the face, cultivate the chi. For symmetry's sake, I'm going to do another brush knee and lazily tie the coat and plain, plain crossed hands. And at the end of here, turn to the front. And we do that same modified single whip here. And the rotating fist under elbow. The brush knee right and left and forward. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can still see this one. Lazily tie the coat. Plain crossed hands. And turn to the front. Cultivate the chi. And that's the end of that form. It's shorter than all the others. This is the Tai Chi salute. You're covering your weapon. It was showing I come in peace. And I think maybe if Barbara is there, it's time for questions. I know I have a lot of questions. Are you there, Barbara? There she is. Okay, Calvin, I'm gonna unmute everyone, okay? So that they can, or maybe, I think you can all just unmute yourselves. So if you have a question for Calvin, just hit unmute and then ask your question and remute yourself so we can all hear his answers. Anybody have a question for Calvin? Is there anybody left? Oh yeah. <laughs> we had 40 total and we've got 32 remaining on the call. The others are off practicing, I guess. I guess. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Calvin, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Thank you. I'm very interested in the sewing style. Yeah. Do I have the information right that Paul Lamb, L-A-M? That's right. He's on um, YouTube. Is there any practicing ones here in Rent County? Um, that's a good question. 
I'm not sure that there is a group currently practicing here in Marin, but uh, I have been uh, certified to teach the form, so that is a, a, a question that I'm, uh, well, it, it may happen. The JCC, I don't know. I did ask, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, my memory just went somewhere else and then went to the next door. <laughs> I asked Norma about it when I when I got certified, so I, I don't know. And then all this happened with the sequestration, so I don't know if there's any plans there. Okay, but, so I should stay aware. Did you want to say something? Stay aware. See. That was the time you want to say something. Thank you. I have a question. And thank you. Calvin, can you hear me? Calvin? No, I couldn't hear this. No. Did you want to ask a question? Calvin. Yes. Mark. Okay. From your class. How are you? I'm sorry, I, your volume is very low. I kept I kept my speakers working well. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. It's it's not ideal. <laughs> I know. My speakers is my uh, microphone is not working well. It's okay. Mark from the class. Uh, Hi Mark. I I can't find your CD that I bought from you a year ago. Okay. I can't believe it, but I misplaced it. So um, until I can, I guess, get another one, um, who would you recommend uh, on the different YouTubes? There's five or six different people doing the Yang yeah. style. And it go for the 24 and the 40? I learned from Duck Fai Wong. Uh, D O C hyphen F A I Duck Fai Wong, and his uh, organization is called Plum Blossom International, and he has videos on there. Okay. Calvin, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, it's Jill from class. This Hi, has Jill. Been, this has been wonderful, but I'm wondering, is there a chance we could? Um, ask the JCC or you to do a Zoom class, kind of like when we would come to class on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Um, that would be up to the JCC. I'm willing to do it. Okay. But I don't know what their provisions are. So Wonderful. I miss it so much. Thank you for your time today. Oh, I will contact the JCC. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Katie Martin. Um, I'm, I'm just a beginner and I've had a lot of trouble uh, knowing my right from my left. Uh -huh. And I think it would be better if I could stand behind you, but then I need to stand and I need to see you, be in front of you to see you. So it's a, it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, everything we have right now is a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll tell you. Um, I always wear a ring in class. Some of my students have said, if you don't wear that ring, I'm lost because I don't know which hand is up. Um, maybe that would be a clue. Okay. You have ring hand, bare hand, uh, that just in this situation. Um, I don't know where, how you are practicing, but if, uh, if you have trouble Identifying left hand and right hand, you could, you know, put a rubber band on one wrist and you could take a magic marker and write an L or an R on the hand. Um, what they used to do in the Revolutionary War was they would take a sprig of straw and put it in one foot and a sprig of hay in the other. So you could go hay foot, straw foot if you couldn't keep your left and right separate. Okay, thank you. I was Glad that that was true. Hey, Calvin, it's, it's Kay. Um, hey. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. It was, you know, it was a pretty basic review, but not bad for those of us that have been doing it for a while. And um, what I realized the most of all, how much I miss your humor. So <laughs> we look forward to seeing you again. I'm, I'm going to sign out now, but thank you. Thank you, Kay. Nice to hear from you. Stay yeah, well. I have a further question. It's Mark again. Any chance yeah. you'll do a YouTube um, video. Say that again, please. Any chance you would do a YouTube 
video of the 24 and 40? You want to shut down YouTube? No. Would you do a video on YouTube? That's what I'm saying. If I do a video, it's going to shut down YouTube. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Um, I'll see if I can find my CD and get some more copies made. That would be one thing. Okay. Calvin, Bob Sawicki here. Hi, Bob. Hi, and thank you for this. And I was just wondering, in your opinion, I know you're not the expert in this field, but if we were to do an outside Tai Chi with six feet of distancing, do you think that's a feasibility? Um, a, a live practice? Yes. No. I don't, I mean, I know that gatherings are discouraged right now, but the problem is we don't have reliable testing, so you don't know if anybody yeah, yeah. inadvertently Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would say I would err on the side of caution because yeah. I would not live with myself if I infected somebody and I didn't or brought brought it people together and caused that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait until there's reliable testing. Okay. Well, thank you, Calvin. Thank you for this. It was a good review and look forward to getting back to the real thing. Thank you. Hi, Calvin. This is Marty Buffum. I haven't appeared in class for a very long time for different reasons, but I've really missed it, and I value what you've done today. Um, uh, I have. I know my left from my right, and vice versa. But I, um, I want to mimic you. That's what I tend to do, and that's what we did in class. And so, um, do you have any recommendations for how to follow you? Well, in a regular class. I would have to do front and back views. And in a regular class, I usually face away from the students, but we have the mirrors. Right. I, I don't know how to handle that one yet. Okay. Uh, this is Barbara Schechner. I knew if we mirror you rather than here right or left, would yeah. that be a solution or for some of us? Um, not, not in all particulars because uh -huh. I just, I can do the form in both directions, and it's it's a little different. It is a start. It is a start, but um, as I said, for a regular class, I would do it facing and then turn around and do it the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Ch new challenges again. Yes, that's right. Good for the brain. Yeah, even if you're not sure you have one. <laughs> Other Calvin? Questions? Calvin? Yes. Can we end it with the I Ching? Um, we can end it with the I Ching form. Yes, that would be perfect. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you. All right. This is a uh, Qigong form that we traditionally end our class with, and it's very straightforward. We start with the feet together. And then you're going to turn each foot 145 to the left, 145 to the right, so your toes are out. And then you're going to turn the heels out, one and then the other, so you're slightly knock-kneed. You're opening your back, what the chi gate called the mingmun at the base of the spine. This increases the flow of the chi. Now for your feet, you want to be not just perched on the earth, but you want to be attached to the earth. So put some glue on the bottoms of your shoes and then flow your energy down through the feet. Just back of the ball of each foot, there is a chi gate called the bubbling well. Exhale through that and sink your chi down into the earth. Just let your energy extend like tree roots down into the earth as deep as you are tall. And check that out for a couple of breaths where you're breathing with those deep roots in the earth. Your shoulders are relaxed. If your chin is up, you want to slowly and gently rotate the chin back just so that you get a slight double chin. That means keeping a straight line on the back of your head so the chi flows up and down and does not get blocked there. Now, if you are comfortable, just shake a little bit. Shake your body a little bit. Settle it in place. Now, your roots go down as deep into the earth as they are tall.
fall in your body. You're going to start down at the end of those roots where they curl around something secure in the earth, like your toes curling around. You're going to inhale from that point up through the body, breathing up through the bubbling well gates, inhaling up the legs, inhaling up the spine, and take the breath into the shoulders so that you slightly inflate the shoulders. And when you exhale, exhale all the way back down to the bottom of your roots. And now inhaling, breathe up and breathe the backs of the wrists up, floating up to shoulders height. And then exhaling, you're going to circle the hands outward. So you are opening your heart center. And when the hands point directly away from the shoulders, you're going to inhale again and leading with the fingertips, you're going to circle the hands overhead, lightly floating up. And then when you exhale, you're going to press up with the palms and you're going to exhale back down to your roots. And then when you inhale, you're going to breathe up from the roots all the way up through the body, up the arms and out the fingertips. Exhaling, you release. Let the palms float down to shoulders height. They're facing the earth. And now inhaling, rotate your shoulders internally, slowly and easily, and rotate the forearms and the upper arms and the hands so you end up with the palms facing upward. Exhaling, circle the edges of the hands in toward the center, coming to shoulders width, making sure there's no tension in the shoulders and that your elbows are facing down. And now inhaling, breathe the palms toward the face. Let the backs of the fingers lightly roll together. And as you exhale, send the joined hands down the center line of the body, down around the Dantian level, around the navel. And now inhaling, rotate the forearms so the palms come to face each other and then hinging at the elbows Bring the forearms out so the arms are parallel at shoulders width. Palms facing and exhaling, compress the chi, cultivate the chi, remember that. Bring the hands close but not touching. No tension in the hands. Slight face spaces between the fingers. Inhale, open up, breathing with the whole body. Expand the chi out to shoulders width. And exhale, compress the chi. Your feet are glued to the earth, so you don't have to have any tension there. Inhale, expand that cloud of chi, breathing with the whole body. And then exhaling, release, empty the palms and let them just drift down like a cloud of dust. Round the shoulders. And then inhaling, lift that chi energy on the backs of the wrists up to shoulders height. It doesn't weigh anything. Exhaling, release it, open your heart, spread your wings. Circle the hands to point away from the shoulders. Inhaling, lead with the fingertips, circle the hands overhead. Let the heels get a little heavy. Exhaling, press up with the palms and down with the tailbone. Inhaling, reach up, connect earth and sky. Exhale, float the palms back to shoulders height, easing down. Inhaling, rotate the shoulders internally, turning the palms up. Exhale, circle the edges of the hands into shoulders width, shoulders down, elbows down. Inhale the palms toward the face. Exhale the joined hands down the center, 
Easy, floating down. Inhaling at Dantian level, rotate the forearms, open up the ball cloud of chi to shoulders width. And exhale, compress the chi. Inhale, expand the ball cloud. Whole body breathing together. Exhale, compress. Inhale, expand. Exhale, compress. Inhale, expand the ball cloud. Exhale, release it, empty the hands, let them drift down, round the shoulders. Inhaling, sink the heels, lift the ball cloud lightly on the backs of the wrists to shoulders height. Exhale, release, open your heart, spread your wings. Inhaling, lead with the fingertips, circle the hands overhead. Exhaling, press up and sit down. Inhaling, reach up, connect earth and sky. Exhale, float the palms back to shoulders height. Inhale, rotate the shoulders, turning the palms up. Exhale, circle the edges of the hands into shoulders width. Inhaling, lift the ball cloud of chi with both hands. Bring it up over the crown gate. And exhaling, gently bring the chi ball down through your head, through your skull, down the neck, through the chest, over the heart. Down to Dantian, around the navel. Inhaling, expand the ball shaped cloud of chi. Exhale, compress. Inhale, expand. Exhale, compress. Inhale, expand the ball cloud. Exhale, compress. Put your arms around the ball cloud and bring it into the body. Ladies have the right hand next to the body. Men have the left. Gather the chi into the area around the navel. Breathe it deep into the dantian. Thank you everybody for coming out to the class. Thank you, Barbara and the JCC for making this happen. Everybody stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. Bringing, thanks for bringing your assistant also. Thank you. <laughs> Great energy. say it's wonderful to practice with you again. Thank you very much. You will. Well. Good.